Silver from 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 Lebanon, I think, and for, from the list you sent yesterday. But this is still still more now. No, but quite quite a lot from 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 Lebanon, from Trinidad. Very so good. it's quite quite worldwide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we we do have a really good group. I would, um, welcome to everyone to to the colleagues from the Ministry. Of Tourism of Cabo Verde, Bon Dia, <laughs> and uh, also we've we've seen people joining us from Dakar, from Venice, from Italy. So I think we're twelve thirty sharp. So we will we will kick start um, this webinar. Okay. Um, my name is Sandra Carvão, and I'm in charge of the Market Intelligence and Competitiveness Department at UNWTO. It's a pleasure to welcome you to another of UNWTO webinars um, during these times of challenges that we're facing. Um, UNWTO um, wants to take the opportunity of um, these new tools to, to reach out to all of you and help you in um, navigating uh, this uncharted territory we're living, but also to prepare for what's coming next. Um, today, we have the pleasure of talking about two things which are going to be critical in this moment, if they were already, but uh, I would say that crises accelerate changes, and I think this is probably what we'll see when, when we move forward. Um, we will be talking about um, community rural development and also um, digitalization, so how can we use innovation and digital transformation to uh, be better in what we do in, in rural development. Um, I'll just, um, before I give the floor to our distinguished panelists, and we have a fantastic group of people with us today, uh, we have Montserrat Peñarroya, if I said it well. Uh, <laughs> very good, Montserrat. And I'm going to use my little uh, notebook as you see for, for the, the, the right title for Montserrat. So Montserrat is a program manager in the degree of digital business at La Salle in the University Ramon Lud in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have with us Klaus Enrich. He's the secretary general of the European Federation of Rural Tourism. Klaus, guten Morgen. And okay. we also have with us Sane Meibum, which I probably pronounced it in a wrong way, but uh, Sane is um, the founder of a very interesting company called I Like Local. Um, they were one of the finalists of the UNWTO startup competition for rural development. So I think we will have um, a very broad view of these issues from different perspectives. And um, I'd like to invite everyone who's with us. We have more than a hundred participants to please use the chat for your questions, comments, uh, we will be taking them as we go, so we hope this can be as interactive as possible. Before I give the floor to Montserrat, I would just like to give you a little bit of a set up the scene without um, going too much into the technical details. And actually, as you can see, I'm starting my presentation by the end. So there you go. Um, about how we at UNWTO see the issue of tourism and rural development. And um, I in purposely called it tourism and rural development and not rural tourism, because for us, um, we want to make sure that it's much more than just rural tourism as we generally think about it. Um, it's about how can tourism can actually have a purpose in improving um, the life and the livelihoods of people in rural areas. So this is a little bit the context where we start from. Um, this year, actually 2020 has been designated by UNWTO as the year of tourism and rural development. So um, as we face this challenge, it's a moment to actually see what does that mean for this specific um, objective that we had this year. Some of the challenges that we all know are faced by um, using tourism for development in rural areas include obviously an aging population, um, the decline in traditional economic activities, which somehow led people to leave the areas, the limited service that often are available, limited skills because of brain drain in these areas connected with migration and limitations in terms of infrastructure. At the same time, we have to, today an added challenge, which is um, UNWTO just came out yesterday with our revised scenarios for the year um, 2020 in terms of the impact of COVID-19 in tourism. We saw already a decline of 22% in international tourist arrivals in the first three months of the year. 
and um, depending when borders will open, and again, this is just international tourism, um, we will probably see a decline that might range between 58% to 78%. Those scenarios are based um, in the situation where we would see in the first scenario an opening up of international tourism slowly, gradually, and with diverse um, paces around the world. In, in July, the second scenario is based on the probability of us seeing some opening of international borders later in September, or if by the end of the year, unfortunately, the situation does not allow for borders to open, um, we do expect the year to, to end very close to a minus 80% um, international tourist arrivals. Obviously, this is unparalleled in, in what we've seen before, and it will take us back into a situation um, of uh, demand shock that we haven't seen in decades. So as we move forward, and how can we take this as an opportunity as well to actually um, look into um, rural tourism as a tool for development? How can we use technology and, and digital tools to um, addressed the domestic market, which will be key at this moment. And before I actually um, give the floor to Monse to talk about um, the digital tools that are at our disposal to, to address this challenge, I'd like to leave you with seven key ideas that for us are important when we talk about this issue. The first one is, and it's very connected to technologies, knowing your customers. If this is already important in normal times, um, in times when you need to recover and when your competition is gonna be much higher for that customer, um, you need to know exactly who they are, when they come, what they think, what their concerns are, because this is one of the big things we'll face um, in recovery. Um, so this would be for me the, the first starting point um, in this area. The second one is um, to do so, we need to empower the community. Um, if we're talking about tourism for community or rural development, the community needs to have the tools to actually advance. Um, and this is one of the things that uh, digitalization can actually help a lot with in terms of training. And we'll be, we'll be hearing from our invitees on actually how can we empower the community through technology. The third point, which is often um, seen as an administrative issue, but it's key, is um, to have stable governance models. If you are to develop rural tourism, um, your territory obviously is your base, and that territory has to have some kind of destination management organization. Why? Because it's important to make sure that there's a continuity in the development plan, there's an engagement of the private sector, the public sector, the community, and if those models do not exist, it will be really difficult to um, proceed with what we want in the future. The fourth one is a little bit connected to the issue of um, governance models is investing in destination management. Um, I think there's a parallel situation here. Um, a tourist will go to a village because the village is known, but a tourist might also go to a specific accommodation or a specific experience because this is what his or her motivation is. So the integration of the destination with um, the experiences needs to be, um, I would say, catered for and, and very targeted. The fifth is also connected today with technology is um, measure. How do you measure um, the impact of your tourists? And what is your KPI for success? Um, particularly with uh, rural development, um, it's not so much about the numbers, <coughs> but what all those KPIs that you want. Um, is it spending of tourists? Is the length of stay that you want to achieve? Is it um, that you want a certain profile of travelers? Is it that your KPIs should be more about the positive impact in the community and how you can actually mitigate the negative impact? So make sure that there, those um, objectives that you want are um, measurable at the end. The sixth point is, uh, or I'd say the sixth idea is about be building leaders in the community. Um, it's very important that either from the public sector or from the private sector, there could be leaders that can be inspiring all the community, but also at the same time, 
pushing sometimes for innovation. And we see that in a lot of communities where sometimes a new hotel or a new experience um, company actually comes and changes the dynamic. So we need to actually be able to feed that um, innovation and that leadership. And the seventh one, which is um, what we all need to do as we go along is how do we innovate in offering the same experiences, but in a different way. So with that, um, I'll leave you with, um, as I said, just an appetizer of ideas on what we would like to see moving forward in the next hour. Um, and I'll stop sharing my screen and actually invite Montserrat to share with us um, her um, guidance on how the digital tools can help us um, with those objectives. Montserrat, all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Um, Yes, uh, thank you for uh, for being here. For me, it's a pleasure and an honor, both uh, both things at the same time. Um, one moment, I have to go to the beginning over here. Yeah. Then, uh, what we have prepared is uh, um, um, an an, an anal analysis about what are the really in the skills, the digital skills that you need uh, if you are uh, in the tourism industry right now. And this is part of, um, of an article or a, a research that we have done from our Institute of Research, which, which is the, the Innova Institute in, uh, in La Salle, in the University, Universidad Ramon Llull in Barcelona, where we are specialists on how technology changes the way we do, we do business. So what we have been done is every week during those weeks of, uh, of uh, confinement is analyze different things. And one of them was how can we help the tourism industry to, uh, to recover after the, the crisis? And we decided to work on the uh, skills that are necessary. And talking with the UN, WTO, the, then we, we saw that, that webinar was uh, going on and we decided to adapt it to rural tourism. So what I'm going to explain you is a little bit of um, part of the research that we have done on what are the skills needed for uh, rural tourism. Okay. So the first thing we have done is to divide the, the, the digital skills in three different types of skills. All are hard skills. You know that there are soft skills uh, and hard skills. We have analyzed the hard skills. We will be working on soft skills in other researches. But this one that I'm presenting you is about hard skills. Okay. So skills that can be, can be learned and that uh, you can have a, a, an exam and that you can show someone that you have those, uh, those skills. So we have divided those skills in three uh, different type of uh, skills, the digital marketing skills, so related to tools on digital marketing, but also uh, digital business skills, as we, we really believe that you need to know how uh, the online world uh, works from the point of view of, of digital business. And then uh, skills and um, the use of tools or so the skill to use that tool that will help you to increase your productivity as well. And, um, and uh, um, what I'm going to do in those uh, 15 minutes is to explain a little bit all those uh, skills. So let's begin with uh, search engine optimization. SEO stands for that, for search engine optimization, and it's being on Google on the first, uh, on, in the middle of the first results without paying. If we pay, then it's advertising, and this is another technique. But search engine optimization is the main technique to drive traffic to a website. So we need to know how it works. We need to know how to create a link building strategy, how to index the content. So when you publish something, to make sure that in less than 48 hours, that something that you have published is already on the internet and that is ranking properly on the result page. So we need to understand a little bit how the um, Google algorithm uh, uh, works. Uh, I say Google, but it can be if you are in Russia, is Yandex, if you are in China, is uh, um, Baidu, so that, that doesn't really matter how it ranks on search engines. But you cannot work on the internet and do not know how a search engine work, okay? So mm, having a knowledge on search engine optimization, we believe that is uh, mandatory. Then another uh, of the, the skills we believe uh, are mandatory is uh, advertising. So knowing a little bit on how to create a campaign, the campaign could be in, in AdWords, in Google, or in Facebook and Instagram, or wherever you want, okay? But you need to know how to create the campaign, how to do the copyright, how the creativities work, and how to create a landing page. 
and also how to measure the results. We will see, Sandra has already said measurement is basic and we will see in another, in, in the uh, skills related to digital business that measuring is, is basic. In campaigns, what they see is that normally uh, people um, do campaigns without checking if um, the return of, of investment of that campaign without checking anything, without any knowledge and the money is waste, okay? and. You, you are not, we don't want to waste money and even less in rural tourism where the funds are, are, are scarce. So uh, we, have to, we have to have some kind of knowledge of advertising. So it's a skill that we strongly recommend to, um, to have. Let's move to the next one is being on social networks. So we are seeing digital marketing skills. Social networks are an important part of, uh, of, of the ecosystem of uh, internet and we need to know how to be there okay we, we need uh, we need to know how to be on facebook as a as a company or as, the, uh, or as a destination how to be on instagram and if we work on business to business how to be on linkedin as well okay people normally ask me well there are so many social networks where should i be well that depends of your public objective as sandra said it's your obligation to know who is your target okay and you need to know where are they and uh, for example, Facebook now is for more for um, people my age. If I'm looking for young people, I will go more for to Instagram. But if I'm looking for really, really very young people, maybe I should go to TikTok. So there, there are uh, many social networks. You need to know which ones are the ones that are used by uh, your customers. So uh, a digital skill that we think that is fundamental is also to know and to know how to manage your presence in social networks. That is for companies, that is for destination, for organization, for both. Okay. Then another thing, direct marketing is also very important. What is direct marketing? This is the direct communication with your customers. For example, now people are beginning to send uh, messages, it could be through WhatsApp or through email or through SMS, doesn't matter, but explaining that we are beginning to open uh, our <clears throat> Our rural home, for example, or that will be open in a month, that we are willing to, uh, to well, we are waiting for them, that we are cleaning things. We are So you need to communicate directly with your customer. Uh, academically, this is called direct marketing, and there are tools for doing that. Okay, We have the, the, the typical mail, Chimo, Constant Contact, Experience Chita Mail, all those programs used uh, for, uh, for email marketing. But those are 1.0 uh, direct marketing. Nowadays, we also have WhatsApp, we have WeChat, we have the Telegram, we have other tools as well. Okay, So at least you need to know how to use them. And if you are in Europe or you are in a country where WhatsApp is uh, working, you need to know that WhatsApp business exists, which is a different WhatsApp than the regular WhatsApp, okay? So this is direct marketing. You need to know how to use it. You need to know the tools and you need to master at least one of the tools to keep in contact with your customers. Then more things, uh, content management. Uh, of course, that if we are doing digital marketing, we need a website, okay? And we use, uh, we all have websites nowadays. The question is normally now is not if I need or not a website. Of course, you need a website, okay? The problem is that many websites cannot be managed through a content management system. They, they had to be managed through a third party company. That's a mistake, okay? A website nowadays is a tool uh, to have a conversation with your customers and you have to be able to prepare offers to, to, um, to, uh, well, to, to, um, to create new products, to try new things. And for that, you need to manage the website. So you need the knowledge on how a content management system works. I, in the slide, you can see uh, several names. So you, you can see WordPress or WooCommerce or Drupal or, or Joomla. Those are the more common ones. WordPress is used by the 60% of the websites nowadays and WooCommerce is the plugin, uh, the e-commerce plugin for WordPress. So they work together, but there are other tools, okay? So I, I don't want you to think that there is only WordPress. There are many other. The important thing is that your website is created with a content management system, not with a static website um, managed by a third party, okay? Because if not, you don't have the freshness to, to change the content and to create offers and to have dialogue with uh, people or talk uh, through your blog or, or, or what we do nowadays in, in digital marketing. So related to digital marketing, we have seen search engine optimization, advertising, social networks, direct marketing, and content management. That would be the five main skills, hard skills that we think that are necessary if you want to move 
on, on the digital marketing field. But if you have a business, you need more skills related to internet. And those are the, the skills that we have um, explained through uh, this, the digital business skills uh, section. So the first one, you need to know that you have a business, okay? And that your business have a, have a model and that your model has different parts and, and the different components. So there is the value proposition that you give, the customer segments, the, 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 the marketplaces where you can buy, the relationship that you want to have with your users. Those are components of a business plan. You, uh, oh, sorry, of a, of a business model. You need to understand how a business works and how when, when the market changes, you should be changing also different components of your business. Okay, the, the main component when people think is the income model, but sometimes to change income models are co co is complex, is complicated. But uh, a business model has many other components. You need to know a little bit about business models, about business modeling, and about how a business works on internet. So this way you will be able to adapt to what we call business model adaptation. Okay, business model adaptation is when the market is 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 changing, when someone is disrupting the market how you should change your business, okay? It's different than business model innovation, which is you change your business to disrupt the market, okay? But nowadays, normal companies are not in a position to disrupt anything. What we normally do is we react, okay? So what we do is business model adaptation. The market is changed by, by, by new companies that appear or by things like the, the co-virus, um, and, and we have to adapt. So you need to, to, to have knowledge about that. At least we, we have the conscience that the, your business model has different parts and that those parts are not a static, that you can change in them and try to adapt your business to the changes that occur on the market. I see so many companies dying for that. So instead of adapting their business model, they, they rather die to change. So that's, that's a big problem. And nowadays you, you need to know how to change and you need to know um, what are the components that at least are easy to change. So uh, skills on digital business are necessary. More things that you need if you uh, have a business on the internet is again, uh, Sandra said, is that data analysis. So we have, we gather data and, and we have metrics of lots of things. But the problem is that people don't use that, the, the, that data. So many people come to me and say, where, where, can I, where can I have big data and, and analysis from big data? I say, are you analyzing the, the small data that you are gathering? When I help destinations, most of the times I see that nobody looks at Google Analytics. So when I help someone, the first thing I say is, I would like to see your Google Analytics. And when I enter their Google Anal Analytics, for, the first thing is that nobody knows the login and the password. Okay, so that means that nobody is taking care of it. Then when I enter, I see that half of the features are not configured. So we don't know where people is coming from. We don't know that the keywords that they were looking on Google, we don't have the configuration about, for example, the gender and the age of the users. So uh, uh, don't worry about big data, okay? Worry about the small data because you are gathering that information, but nobody's analyzing it. So if you work on digital business or if you have an organization or a company, it doesn't matter, or a destination. Many of you, I, 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 I see that you are destinations. You need to analyze the data. You need to have simple skills. So you don't need, you don't, don't need to be a, a big data analyzer, but at least to understand the, the analytics from Google or from the tool you use and the analytics that you gather on your social networks so Facebook has a magnific analytics, but people don't analyze them. You need to know how to do it. And if you sell through a booking engine, the booking engines also have lots of data. Okay, so you need skills to analyze data. Okay, if not, you are dead because you are in a digital world and everybody tries to have data, 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 but then if you are not able to analyze it, what's the point? Okay, so, uh, the skill of that analysis, we believe that it's fundamental and it's mandatory and it's very important. Then let's go to the, to the last uh, part, the productivity skills. Those days, and because of the coronavirus, we have been able to try all, all of them. Uh, I'm sure you didn't, uh, many of you had never been in a, in a webinar like this one before. Uh, 
so let's uh, we have analyzed a little bit all those product uh, all those tools that will increase our productivity we begin with the uh, collaborative uh, tools so being able to work in documents with many other people uh, you can do it in in google drive in one drive it doesn't matter so um, understanding how the cloud works and how you can have documents on that cloud instead of on your computer and how can you work collaboratively with other people okay that will increase a lot your productivity when we work in the in the research institute we we work from everyone from from his country and his home uh, and uh, we work in a document and we keep talking we are 10 or 11 or 12 depending of the of of, um, of, of the day and we keep working and talking at the same time and you cannot imagine how the productivity increases is exponential it's so so different than working alone and working in a document and then sending one version and sending another version please don't ever do versions of documents okay work collaboratively work it that doesn't matter the tool okay it doesn't matter if it's free or it's paying but work in a using collaborative tools so this is mandatory nowadays. It's no excuse for not doing it. Okay. Then the next one, virtual virtual meetings, is what we're doing now. Okay. We uh, events have to be uh, are virtual nowadays. We had to learn how to use Zoom or Adobe Connect or Webex or Collaborate. It doesn't matter. Okay. So we have had to learn how to use those tools. If but the tools were there before. Okay. The problem is that we were not using them, but they were there. The, now is again what Sandra said, uh, because of the crisis, we have received a push so that we have to, 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 to swim and to jump to the swimming pool and begin to, to, to swim, even if we don't, didn't want to. Okay. But the tools were there. The problem is that we were not using them. Okay. So we, at least there are a positive part with, uh, with all the, these uh, crises. That is, um, these kind of tools are beginning to get used. Uh, uh, by, by people and people is losing the fear of using them uh, and they see that you can work normally using that kind of, uh, of tools. So virtual meetings are here in, in the screen. I have shared some of the, of the, the, the tools, but what you need is the skill uh, to use those tools and, and, uh, and how to, to, to be there. Then the CRM. Again, Sandra said it's mandatory to know your customer. For that, you have tools. Okay, the tool, a C CRM uh, is a customer relationship management. But the customer relationship management could be a program or could be an Excel file. Okay, doesn't matter. The important thing is that you do you do it. Okay, so that you keep track of your customers, you keep track of the who, what what kind of customer is, what are the, the, the what segments they form. Uh, if you can create uh, like a persona for every segment, even better, and that you check everything they do on the evolution of a customer so that you can know better your customers. For that, the programs are called CRM, for Customer Relationship Management. But as I said, it doesn't matter the program. You can do it with an Excel file or even you can do it in paper. Okay. The important thing is that you do it. So uh skills on on that uh, i believe we believe that are uh, completely necessary and then uh, the last one is uh this this maybe for rural tourism is a little bit more complicated but you need programs to manage your property if you have more than 10 rooms my advice is already to have a pms so a program that will allow you to manage the rooms to manage what uh, the occupation and that in a, in another kind of uh, if you, if it's not a hotel or, or a rural home that is called an irp for enterprise resource planning but you need software to manage everything but if you don't have the software doesn't matter okay the important thing is that at least you know all all the different the different processes that you have in your component that you have kpis for all the processes and you keep track on how everything is working okay but there are programs for that and that was the the last of the skills i want to share with you uh, um, with uh, all the skills that we have detected so now probably you are thinking okay this woman is crazy this woman think that someone in the rural tourism should be like a superhero like like the slide i'm showing you well yes we all are superheroes if we want to manage a business, we need to know a little bit of everything. We need to know, of course, how the business works. But then if we manage the marketing, we need to know search engine optimization. We need to know how to do a campaign. If we, if we have data, we need to know how to analyze the data. And if we have customers and rooms, we need to have a program to gather that data. So yes, 
at the end, you don't need to be an, a NASA engineer or a rocket, a rocket, engineer, rocket science engineer, okay? But a little bit of a skills related of what I have explained, I think I do, okay? So if you are in those days that, that um, we are working, uh, some are working less because all the, the, the physical presence is not there. And for example, you have your hotels closed or your rural homes closed, it's the time to do a course on search engine optimization, a little course on, on advertising. And, and YouTube is full of videos explaining how to do it. So, so there is a, a, the capacity of, of uh, self uh, tuition that, that you need to develop as well. But internet is full, completely full of resources. And also from the UN WTO, there is full of courses that, that they do. Next week, we will do a search engine optimization course. And, and uh, at the end of the week, we will do an uh, advertising course. So from inside the UN WTO, we also do lots of courses. So those are not just the skills that you need. You, you, uh, now that you can uh, uh, profit these days to, to, to do it, okay? And it, it, it doesn't cost uh, money. It's just time and the willingness to learn. And I leave you, I finish here with, with, with this concept, that the dynamic learning, which is imagine what you would like to have. Imagine what you need. Say, I would like to have in my website this, or what I really need is that. Then go to the internet and explore what is there. Okay, the, uh, the, the world is so big and so many people are connected to internet that doesn't matter what you're thinking, someone has already thought about that and has already created the tool to do it. So explore what is, what, what is in the internet. Then go to YouTube or go wherever you want and learn how to use it or learn how to create new things. Then think about what you have learned and convert that in real knowledge and use that knowledge to have an, a competitive advantage. Okay, so that is that concept of dynamic learning. I leave you with uh, with you. Uh, with that, and uh, I'm, your feedback will be highly appreciated. And uh, I uh, stop sharing the uh, the screen, and um, I pass uh, to, to my following colleague, which I think is thank same. you. Thank you so much, Montserrat. Um, and um, without any further ado, I'll, I'll give the floor to, to Sane Meibung um, to, to share her experience. And as I mentioned, we'll take questions at the end. Um, and I'm gathering the comments on, on the chat. So those who are doing them, please continue. And any questions you have, we'll be addressing them at the end. Sane, the floor is yours. Yes. Can you all hear me? Just double checking. Yes. Maybe yes. a little bit louder if you can. Yeah. Wonderful. Good. Perfect. Well, thank you so much um, for having the possibility to share like uh, what I like local is about and, and great to see that so many people from across the world are, are joining. Um, I'm Sana, the founder of I like local. Um, I like local all started with my own passion for travel and a desire to give back and make an impact. And while I was traveling myself, um, I noticed and realized that my best experiences during my own trips were the encounters with local people. And over the years, you see many travel trend reports uh, popping up like Skip from the UNWTO. Um, also seeing that more travelers feel like a tourist and that they want more authentic and immersive experiences and, and give back and are more aware of their footprint that they are making. Um, and at the same time, I also realized that a lot of people in especially developing countries are not really benefiting from the tourism money that is going into their countries. Um, there is a lot of tourism leakage. And I, for example, live myself in Kenya and what you dare see is that 80% of the lodges in the national parks and the safari parks are in hands of foreign investors. So this was an opportunity that I saw in the beginning, like around 2011, 2012, uh, when the peer-to-peer -peer economy was popping up. And I thought like, what if we create a platform where we connect these both needs and provide people in these destinations who um, don't have access to this tourism market, a platform as well. So that's how, well, when we started I Like Local in 2014. 
So I like local exactly is a uh, connect struggles with local people and communities in developing countries across Asia and Africa, and that provide authentic local experience for travelers and generating a sustainable income for local people. So in this way, we we provide people, travelers who are looking for these immersive experiences, a broad range of uh, different experiences and in a very easy and um, um, uh, yeah, an easy way to book these experiences while leaving that positive impact. And at the other hand, we provide local people with this access to the travel market that they didn't have before and let them earn like a fair wage and provide employment and give them our support and training that they need. Um, so our social, some of these social experiences that we that we offer vary from farm stays to home stay to food experiences, track and tours, uh, art and cultural workshops, but all with the same focus in our minds that we want to connect and that we want to engage people and empower them at the same time. So and it's interesting, like, um, I think it was an article from the World Bank um, that showcased the the opportunity of travel and that it has been identified as one of the main industries that can lift people out of poverty. And if you, these are just a few data that I gathered to showcase that um, that option is that like three trillion USD um, was flowing into emerging markets in 2018. And 7% of the yearly growth rate of the continents that we are active in 10% um, of global GDP is fueled by tourism, and 75% of global travelers are looking for these immersive experiences. But, however, like what we have seen ourselves in the last like six years is that most local people or um, hosts who join our platform are middle class people, and like this bottom of the pyramid is still excluded. Um, simply because they don't have the English language skills or they don't have internet access or they have no clue like what travelers are exactly looking for and about these opportunities that we provide. So therefore, we started a pilot project with ActionAid, uh, an international NGO operating in 45 countries across the world, mainly working with more marginalized communities so that we can see, can we include this group as well? Um, and now with this, uh, so this is the way how we um, started digitalizing these um, community groups and local people to have access to the travel market as well. But now with this COVID-19, we're even thinking, okay, like this digitization is very important. And what as a company can we do at this moment to still either generate income or empower them in different ways? So currently we are looking into um, uh, to what extent can we offer virtual experiences because of course not all experiences are suitable or not all uh, local people have the possibility to do things online. Um, another thing that we are currently further um, developing is to empower our hosts and the local people that are on the platform via online training to develop further develop their digital skills. I think uh, like um, it really taps into what Monsa was already explaining so all these online marketing skills, but for us what's also very important is um, uh, learning people to, um, to have photography skills or videography skills. Because uh, what we have seen is that the better the, the, the pictures and um, are on, on the experiences that we offer, the easier they will sell. And another thing, and especially during this time, is that everybody is stuck at home, but the interest in traveling at some point again and exploring the world will be still there. So how can we bring that to people's homes? And I think it is so important to keep connecting our world. And in our case, it's really sharing the stories of our, of our hosts, how they are um, dealing with the situation at this moment, or what makes their um, destination so interesting, or uh, how do they how do they certain things in their in their lives um we believe that it's very interesting to share these stories and that people are really interested to hear them that's why we started like live interviews on, on zoom and also on on instagram live um so that uh, they have like a stage as well to tell it and um we are looking into how can we 
uh, inspire travelers to virtually travel the world, where we include like stories from our hosts and beautiful imagery of various destinations. Um, so these are some of the ways that we are digitizing. Um, um, yeah, the, the, the various things that we do. Um, so our impact to date, so we have empowered over 4,000 local people in, in 19 countries, on average, like earning 90 USD uh, per booking with a community of over 14,000 travelers. And this is Reka, for example, one of our hosts in Nepal. Um, she runs an, an orphanage. Um, so she takes care of 17 orphans besides three children of her own. And by offering a cooking class, a home cooking class, she's able to, to support them with, with food and clothes and uh, a roof above their heads. So these are some of the SDGs that we focus on as a company. And um, that's the end of my presentation. And I would, uh, anybody who thinks, who's currently in this webinar and thinks, wow, this could be of interest to us as a tourism board, or we would like to empower more of our communities and we, we want to give them access to that travel market, uh, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sana. I think that's uh, always inspiring to, to hear that. And uh, we have um, almost 100 people 150 people in this webinar and from so diverse places as Andorra, Nepal, Kenya. Um, so I think um, there's such a huge opportunity to actually in all countries um, emerging, developing, um, advance to empower communities to, to another level through digital. And um, I think um, also one important point to mention is to keep the dream alive while we're still locked down at home um, and keep that engagement between the destination and, and the consumers is, is super important uh, mm -hmm. because you need to keep um, the consumer mind still on your destination, um, that um, you're still there, you, you are with them as well. I think one of, the, one of the things that we've seen from many destinations and companies is the message of uh, we're with you in this. So, you know, we're, we're keeping you in mind and we hope that you keep us in mind as well. So I think it's, um, it's, uh, it's very enriching to see that from a community perspective. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much. And we'll be able to take the questions um, as, as we go along. And I'd just like to answer one of them, which is more of a logistical one, is many people are asking about if the webinar will be uh, available in a record format afterwards yes you'll find it um, in youtube afterwards as well as well as in our uh, unwto webpage and our colleagues from the unwto academy were um, the angels behind us making sure that all this works we'll email everyone with the links so without any further ado i'd like to invite klaus to share um, his experience on a very specific project that, that has been developed uh, Klaus, the floor is yours. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I will specify on practical tools that we have uh, or can recommend from the practical side. I will try to share my screen. This should be this one. And now go to the full presentation. If this should, should run, yeah, here, here we go. So uh, my name, Klaus Ehrlich, German, living in Spain for 34, 35 years, I don't remember, uh, and responsible since 2003 for the management of the European Federation of Rural Tourism. I will quickly explain what this is. Uh, it is a provider organization, so it's private, strictly private, uh, we group basically hospitality in private homes, small commercial hotels, you see this on the right side, uh, which can be either BNP or self-catering. It is a European concept of rural tourism, not that much community-based as it is in, in other parts of the world. Uh, and it's operating in Europe since 1950. So it's about 70 years experience, but uh, very different in countries between East and West. At the moment, it's 35 organizations from 32 countries. If you click the website, you will find out that it was hacked. So we are not exempt, even if we are, or I am supposed to be a bit IT expert, 
but if these bad things happen, then uh, you are out of the business for a couple of days because websites can be complex even if they're done in WordPress. So let's move on to skills needs. Uh, as already Monse commented and also uh, Sanne, um, we are working in a Europe-wide uh, project on future skills in tourism. We have the three areas that you see here, sustainability, green, social communication, and digital skills. And now we had the visit of Mr. COVID, which strongly accelerated all the digital part, which now goes into sustainability skills, it goes into communication skills. And we really need, not just in rural tourism, but in tourism in general, to strongly think digital in all aspects of the management, information, communication of our small businesses. And for this, we need practical tools, practical skills, practical things that we can do, which is what I will focus on in the next minutes. On this slide, <clears throat> you will, I mentioned first three tools that everybody knows, or maybe not. First, social media, this was commented for showcasing your destination, your place, your service. YouTube is still the easiest way. You make a video, you draw it up. And I mentioned one design tool, which is not very much known, but it's very powerful. You see on the right side, the flyer of our organization, Eurojit. You can scan this QR code, by the way, and you go to Canva. Um, <clears throat> this tool is completely free in use, and you can do really good quality graphic documents with it. So keep it in mind, it's easy to handle even for a small provider. Of course, you need online internet connection. But let's now go to the two training and practical tools I would like to present in more, more, more detail. One is about digital marketing. So this is widely covers what Monse already presented in the first, time, first part, the areas. And the second one is on augmented reality. If you don't know what it is, I will explain in a minute. <clears throat> First, Eki tour. I will quickly move into the website so you see what it does. Basically, basically, it's an online platform with that mixes traditional texts that you can read with dynamic tutorials made in Prezi. From the design I saw from Monse's presentation, it looks like 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 Prezi as well, uh, which makes it more um, entertaining to go through the learning process. It has a lot of external resources, and by doing the different modules, you can create your own marketing concept by answering questions to after each module and setting up your own marketing plan. I will enter in a moment. Just one observation. This project finished in 2017, so some links may not be updated. But for a general training on all the aspects of e-marketing and e-management, it is still very much valid. So let's have a quick look. This is the page you get. There are several languages available, English, uh, Lithuanian, Italian, Spanish. So stay in the English, of course. And I go directly to the modules index to show you what it is. Here you have the list of the nine topics. Monza will like it because it covers many of her areas. Klaus, when... I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't know if you wanted to share the online screen because we're still seeing your presentation. Oh, I sh you should see my screen theoretically that is interesting because now i'm full screen maybe you need to take out your yeah, PowerPoint. No, the problem is i'm full screen uh, uh my I'm full screen i can not move back that's a problem maybe maybe what what i saw like when stop, i care stop I sharing think... screen no yeah, i share I, it again. I screen the, Yes, right, and share and it again. Start right. with the website. In, in Zoom, you have to uh, share one. and share it. Yeah, again. okay, no, it's there. Now you should see, right? We still see your presentation. Now I shared the screen. That is funny because I shared the. No, wait, 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 where is this? Yeah, there it is, right? You should see it now, right? Yeah, our academy team is um, sharing it on your behalf. So just go ahead. OK, great. Uh, so I guess, but now I need to go back to my, uh, need to get to 
back to my screen because I'm here in the full screen, okay? So uh, you go to modules index and then you see, see all the topics. Just click on, for example, the number five, my website. You have a short description and then you go to start module where you get a text and you go to tutorials. Now, as I'm full screen, I don't see the other one. You go to, to, to tutorials and then, for example, plan create your website, you have a Prezi tutorial that guides you through the whole process. So you can play around with this. Uh, of course, I see it now. I don't know if, if you can see it. Um, but this is basically the concept. And by answering the assessment, self-assessment, by each module, you create your own reply and your own marketing plan. But let's, let's move on to the next slide. Can you share again my uh, main screen, Aurea Ruro? I will see if I can get this done again. Now I will share this one again. So you should see now the, but we will have the same problem, of course. Uh, maybe if the management can at one moment open the link below. Well, augmented reality. Augmented reality is something, can be something very simple or something very complicated. The most simple thing you can do is, for example, you make a photo or design your menu in a restaurant. You upload this picture to a server with a link. You create a QR code that directly shows this picture and you have already an augmented reality of your menu card instead of handing it out in paper which in COVID times is a very interesting thing. But there's a lot more behind it. When you go to this link that will be in the presentation, you can also scan the codes. Okay, I think uh, if you want to show it, um, Dihana well, can show it on the screen or we just continue in any no, case. No, we continue, we continue and then we go to Perfect. the to the to the link of the website below. I think that's that's easier because this augmented reality highlighting you see here is just a document, it's a PDF document that gives a quick introduction on the topic of augmented reality and to understand what it's about. But the interesting thing about this platform that we will end in a second is it is a training on the topic, but it also offers you a basic content design tool to create own individual ver uh, augmented reality applications. So you see an example on the screenshot on the right, this is the application on a mobile phone. There are two possibilities. You can, can do this based on a QR code reading, which is useful, for example, in a hotel or in a, in a holiday apartment to explain how, think, how different things work. So, so the user scans the code and gets information. It's multilingual, so you can do it in several languages. And the other possibility is by geopositioning, which is of interest for destinations. To, for example, give information instead of handing out brochures, provide information about places of interest to visit. As soon as you're close to it, the information comes up and the user gets all the history or the pictures or the, or the videos, whatever you want to do. Now let's enter a moment in the tool. So you click on the link below. If Again, our as I understand. Our colleagues in the back hand yeah, okay. will put it live. Thank you, okay. Dihana. I can try to do it myself, of course. There you go. Okay, uh, this brings you directly to the uh, list of the tools. If you scroll down a little bit, please. And you have all the tools that are available. Now, if I was doing it myself, I could enter in the different, uh, in the different items, but basically you should look at the web tool and smartphone app, that's the point two. And the e-learning platform, that's a point five, where you have seven modules, six with content, and one that is a tutorial guide of how to use these two applications. These two things are the interesting parts for anybody who wants to first learn about augmented reality, what it is, and second, to create 
small basic applications for his own service or for a small destination. Okay, you can you can can go out there again, and I will just carry on with some remarks on this on the on my main main presentation. So if you share this again, please, or if I have to share it, I think you can do it, Klaus. It's easier oh, because you. Yeah. Okay. Then I share it again. Uh, let's go where we are here. Share this, and sorry for this. These problems I didn't expect this to happen. So because it also takes time, which is just on this last tool. Uh, keep in mind both also the ikit one. It's meant for self-training. It is not necessarily meant for creating proficient professional applications, but it helps you to do, understand what it's about. It helps you to create simple things with or without the tools for content and application. And one interesting thing uh, for those that are more interested in this topic, the codes for the content tool and the application are open source and we are happy to provide this for anybody who wants to develop further on this. They are completely free because it was a European funded Erasmus Plus project. So open for everybody who's interested in this, just contact me back. This are the contact data, uh, you have the email, and apart from what Sandra already said, that it will, will be available, if you scan this QR code right away now, you can download my presentation already immediately. Thank you very much and sorry for the technical problems. Thank you very much, Klaus. Well, we learned uh, that Zoom still has some improvement to do, which is good as well, because uh, being so popular these days, uh, there's always space for improvement in the, in the technology world. Um, I thank all of you to, for, for such a practical um, uh, presentations. I think that was really the objective of today's session. To, to look into, especially in these times of um, confinement and challenges. Um, I think self-training, um, as Monsa mentioned in the beginning, there's an immense opportunities out there. Um, just to mention as well, UNW will be doing a, a webinar, as Monsa mentioned, on the 12th. So keep an eye on our website and our social media to, to register for that. Um, and also um, I will bring now some of the questions that have come up in the chat. And um, this is specifically for Sana. Um, a, a colleague on the chat is asking, what is the difference between um, your programs and um, volunteerism? I think that's um, an issue that is often um, discussed uh, in terms of, um, of the ethical component of it. Um, and I think um, it, it's important to, to maybe uh, stress that, um, that difference. Yeah. Yes. So we are more a marketplace and not really um, providing volunteering, only volunteering experiences. Um, so yes, we do let people immerse into local culture and really let, let them experience. But these are most of the time like um, short term like day experiences or a few hour experiences and we do have like some overnight stays um, but uh, yeah so it's not that you are helping them or that you teach like in an orphanage uh, we started initially like uh, in 2014 with also offering a few of these but um, we stopped doing that because we we noticed well we are we are not like um, uh, uh, positioning ourselves too much like that and we are hardly selling them um, so that's something that we are currently not adding to our website anymore um, yeah so that's the main difference you still pay for the experience that you do um, so not really much like volunteering in that sense Thank you very much, Sana. I think that the important point that, that was mentioned is um, you're, you're a platform at the end of the day, and this is where technology and skills can make a difference because um, we're talking about giving access to um, whatever community, whatever small business is located independently of where it is located to a global market of people who can actually uh, look for different experiences, either they're located in, in your case, either in Africa, in Asia, uh, but they can be in Spain, they can be in Europe, they can be anywhere in the world. Um, the good opportunity of platforms like uh, Sana is that uh, through technology, you can actually reach a market that before was not there. Um, and I think this is, this is probably one of the key elements when we talk about um, 
about digital skills. Um, I think um, I would like to also take this opportunity and ask um, both Monse and, and Klaus um, in, in the current context, because um, many destinations or businesses are obviously in a, in a survival mode. If you'd have to leave them with, you know, um, three key things that should be their top list in adapting currently, uh, but also preparing for that acceleration in the future. Um, I would like to, to close today with, with those three to-do things that cannot miss in your list. Um, I know there's probably 20, and those 20 will be <laughs> much more detailed in another 20 and another 20. But if, um, if we would um, somehow um, try to guide the colleagues in the, in, in the Zoom call today, what would those three things be? Well, I, I just want, okay. I'm going to go, go ahead, Klaus. No, 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 go, 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 go. Me? <laughs> Ladies first. <laughs> okay, <laughs> doesn't have to, but, but okay. Um, I would say w one thing instead of three. The most important one, from my point of view, is the capacity, the, 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 the ability, the, the skill to analyze data. That would be take your Google Analytics, which is a free program, and there are others, okay? But, but if you every day analyze who is the people who has entered your website? What was the profile, the gender, the age? What, what were the things that they were looking for? The keywords that have drive uh, traffic to the website? What are the landing pages that they have visited? If you spend one hour learning about your customer and then you go to the website and you improve one page, okay? And then if you can, you create an entry on your blog that would be advisable at least once uh, once a week. But if you do that, I can guarantee you a growth, okay? a growth of 10, 15%. But at least you have to work one hour in the website. So that's the problem that one, you have to understand, you have to work on the website. The website is not a catalog that is done and it's there. And second, you have to learn how to do the interpretation of the data and, and, uh, and uh, how can you gather knowledge from, from data. That's my advice. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Monte. Data analytics and act on your website. Yeah. Klaus? Yeah, I would, I, I go in a more, in a more general way. Uh, I think Monte mentioned this at the beginning. We need to understand that the world is digital and many, many destinations, many providers still live completely in the analog world. I still see loads of brochures, printed, papers, printed, shows, fairs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the information goes digital, uh, the showing, the experience before to make, to, to, to create appetite to visit is digital, it's on the internet, it's online. Uh, I presented some, some tools, there's a lot more. Uh, all the information we have about our customers uh, is in data. So the first and most important thing is to understand that the world of the information is digital. You still then have to deal with the customer in person. And this is where in tourism, why a visitor comes, he doesn't come to buy a bed, he buys an experience, he buys a happy moment. This is what we can give as persons. But everything that's managing around this is getting digital. And it really is the point to understand this, to assume that we are in a digital world and that competences in this field are absolutely critical. As Monza said, one hour a day, two hours a day, go to any of the short videos on YouTube, on the videos, on the resources I presented and start learning. Set up your, your daily one hour digital learning. And for sure you will find find the success in half a year, you will see the world in a different way and be a lot more able to interact with your customers in different countries. Thank you so much, Klaus. I think uh, that's probably one of the opportunities that this crisis has is once uh, many of the workers, unfortunately, in the sector need to um, not be um, operational at this moment is to invest in, in training. And uh, from the UNWTO side, actually, this is one of the recommendations that we included in our set of recommendations to governments, which is support training of um, those people who cannot be um, performing their work now. Um, it's an excellent opportunity to think about um, financial support, but 
compensate that financial support together with training because obviously we need to keep uh, protecting jobs but we also need to to improve skills so i think there's a huge opportunity for governments around the world at this point to actually establish specific programs where um, you have um, a fee for a worker but that fee is actually linked to doing some kind of training and i think that training in digital would pay uh, back um, to the country itself afterwards um, so before I close, um, I want to also give the opportunity of Sana to leave us with that last message, especially from a business which is now facing the constraints of not being able to operate, um, with that last message to, to our participants. Yeah, I think it, it all activates um, like creative ideas like this situation. It's like a reset and we're looking at how are we doing business and um, how will the future look like and how do we prepare as a company to this new future. And um, to all people who are currently joining the webinar, um, for us, it's really looking at, okay, what can you currently do to prepare for that new future? And if that's a lead, like maybe joining our platform to at some point get like um, uh, access to that travel market or developing your own skills further so that you're able to create maybe your own website on Wix or uh, be able to do more promotion via online online marketing. I think now is the time to really, to really invest in them. Thank you very much, Sana. Well, with that, I think we're just five minutes below our time. I really want to thank Montserrat, Sane, and Klaus for joining us from Barcelona, the Netherlands, and uh, somewhere in sunny Spain, where we see clouds backwards. <laughs> um, I want to thank also uh, <laughs> our good colleagues in the UNWTO Academy, my own team, uh, Sole, who's been dealing with making sure that all of us are here on time with our content. And particularly, I want to thank um, almost 150 participants who joined us today from so many diverse corners of the world. Um, keep following us on, uh, on our social networks. You'll be able to learn all about the new training opportunities that we're doing. Also, for those interested, UNWTO has an online academy where you can do for free um, a basic course on tourism. So just Google UNWTO Online Academy and you'll be able to find it. And also all our courses developed by the UNWTO Academy are available at uh, www.unwto.org. So we do hope to see you very soon, continuing to talk about digital transformation and rural tourism. And again, thank you so much, Montserrat, Sane, and Klaus. Hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks for all.